Brad Gerstner here with me today for the hour. He is the founder and CEO of Altimeter Capital. 95% of his portfolio is in tech, including an investment in Uber, that company beginning its roadshow. He also has a large position in Facebook. I figure we should start with all things tech. Thank you for being here. It's great to have hey you. Hey, man. Welcome. Yeah, it's been a while. We deliver this weather <laughs> it's to beautiful. the Bay. It is beautiful. It's like to have you. Uh, we said uh, it's a perfect time to do this. S&P, another new record high today. It's been in large parts a, a tech-driven rally. How long is this party going to go on? Well, you know, let's just step back for a second. Q4, we had a 23% drawdown in FANG. Um, it feels like a party today, but we're just back to where FANG was at the end of Q3. Um, I think if you take a longer perspective on this, we're as excited about technology as ever. We think actually the pace of innovation is accelerating. The cycle time on innovation is shortening. Um, and so, you know, I, I think I heard people call the top of tech in 2005, in 2011, in 2016. Far more money has been lost avoiding tech because you thought it was at the top than just taking a consistent approach to investing in innovation. And this is the heart of innovation. Okay, so I'm looking at Facebook shares as we speak, 194 bucks. Let's just call it that. Um, still ways to go to get to the high. Not all that far. Um, really intrigued by the move you made in, the, in December during the drawdown. You put 20% of your fund in Facebook. Over 20% of our fund in Facebook. Why? Um, you know, I often say to, the, to our team um, that, you know, our goal is to find fantastic companies with multi-year growth opportunities that for some reason or another, at, at a point in the market cycle, people are misvaluing. It was very clear to us in Q4 the reasons why the market was misvaluing Facebook. You know, I would hear from portfolio managers in New York, my son or daughter no longer use Facebook, even though they had moved to Instagram. Um, everybody was worried about what they were hearing out of Washington, D.C. And so we were looking at a company that was growing over 30%. Our numbers were higher than consensus and trading at nine times EBITDA. Even today at $190 a share, Facebook trades at a lower multiple than Procter & Gamble, a lower multiple than Walmart, two companies that are barely growing. What about all the issues that exist around Facebook, though? I mean, there's a reason why there was so much criticism, right. don't you think? I mean, listen, there is no doubt that the social implications of having a platform with two and a half billion daily users are profound. We're grappling with those as a, as a society. The management team is grappling with those. They haven't been perfect. But there is no management team in business that I would rather have grappling with these issues than the management team at Facebook. If you listen to their earnings call, Mark Zuckerberg's authenticity about tackling these problems, the dollars they're using to tackling these problems. Just let me give you one example. They, they said in their transparency report and on the quarterly call that using artificial intelligence, which they've invested billions in, they detected 99% of the hate speech attacks occurring on the platform before they were reported. This is a management team that is open, that is honest, that is transparent about the challenges. And from our perspective, these are the types of challenges that you have when you have a new entrant of massive scale that's changing the face of technology. I know there are people listening to this who say, wait a minute, he, he just said they're open, they're honest, they're transparent. There were times where they were neither uh, uh, of those, don't you think? Well, Did they handle all of this the, the no, right I, way from I, the beginning? I, I'm, I'm saying up front, and I think they've said up front, they can do better. Cheryl said on the call, we could have done better and we will do better. My point is that I want a team that knows the issues, is responding to the issues, is adjusting the platform. The opening sentence of Mark's letter was that we're in the midst of a shift from a public platform to a public plus private pl pl platform, end-to-end -end encryption, letting users know why they're being targeted with ads, the ability to shut ads off, the ability to uh, delete your history. Um, I've observed the evolution of the Internet over the course of the last 25 years, and I would just say I've, there, there have been many bad actors along the way. This is not a team of bad actors. They haven't done everything perfect, but this is the management team that, I, that I'm thrilled to have running the company. Okay, what about the prospects of regulation? How do you view that as an investor with uh, obviously scale in this stock? I think, I think it's an issue facing not only Facebook, but frankly facing all of the Internet super apps. 
you know, whether it's Google, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Apple, there's been a massive consolidation of enterprise value into the six or so seven largest technology companies. By our analysis in 2011, they represented about 60% of the NASDAQ internet companies. Today, it's over 90% of the enterprise value in the NASDAQ. Um, so when we hear the cries out of Washington, Elizabeth Warren saying we ought to break up these companies, what I want to better understand from them is to what end? What is their objective, right? If our objective is to undermine innovation, if our objective is to hand over the victory to the Chinese, to Alibaba, to JD, to Tencent, then that would be a pretty good solution. What I see out of these companies is that they're responsibly investing in the technologies that are going to drive the innovation productivity, not only for those companies, but for our economy and for the United States. So let's say you know, breaking them up is the nuclear option, right? Let's right. say that's not going to happen. Right. But what about increased regulation? Of well, sort? I mean, it's happening. GDPR in Europe. Facebook has said we're going to deploy GDPR standards across the world, even though we're only required to deploy them in Europe. So I think they're getting ahead of the regulation. Certainly, they talked about an accrued uh, in the quarter for a big fine coming out of the FTC. They said three to five billion dollars. It could be significantly more than that. Um, so uh, again, when I look at the risk out of Washington, we take that into account in our models. It's obviously a discount that you're applying. But for a company that we were buying at a discount to Walmart and P&G for massively more growth, much better technology, you know, and really driving the future of, of innovation, we think we're you know, we're given a, a steal of lifetime. I, I look at your top holdings. I don't see a Google, uh, for example. People often look at these uh, these two companies not as, uh, you know, competitors in some sure. respects, obviously, but uh, their valuations sure. uh, are attractive. Why Facebook over Google? Yeah, so, I mean, I, tremendous respect for Google. Um, if somebody would have told me in 2012, when Google's desktop search volume started going negative, because people shifted to apps on their mobile devices. If you would have told me in 2012 that they could maintain a growth rate of revenue over 20%, I wouldn't have believed it. It's amazing what that management team has been able to pull off. However, if you look at the growth rate of Google when they were the same size as Facebook is today, Facebook just posted a quarter growing at 30%. Same time, Google was growing 21% with a higher valuation. So in Facebook, I look at a company that has a dominant global position in social networking, a dominant global position in private messaging with, with WhatsApp and Messenger. And I hope we get to talk some more about well, you, WhatsApp. You, you think they can continue to monetize that in ways that they haven't even scratched the surface of yet. It, 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 you know, look at what's going on in China with WeChat. It's a super app that not only is your communication, it's your payments platform, it's the way you interact with commerce. The opportunity for WhatsApp, which is dominant, 400 million daily users in a place like India, to build the WeChat of India is obvious to us. Today, they bear all the costs with none of the revenue associated with it. So we think there are billions and billions of dollars in upside profits for the company when they begin, when they choose in the future at some point to begin monetizing these properties. Uh, I don't see Apple on your list. Uh, I see Amazon, though. I see Microsoft. I see Salesforce, NVIDIA. These are stocks we talk about all the time. Right. I, you know, so we've talked a lot about Internet. I think undemanding multiples from a valuation perspective. Um, you know, we had the big retracement in FANG. We own uh, Facebook today at 18 times, you know, earnings below a market multiple, which we don't think makes a lot of sense. But if you look at software, so our largest software position on the public side is Tableau. On the private side is a company called Snowflake, which we'll talk about later today with, with Pat Grady. Software clearly has had a lot of multiple expansion, mm -hmm. right? I, I remember in January of this year, Stan Druckenmiller coming on saying, I'm negative on, you know, I'm, 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 I'm skeptical of the economy, I'm skeptical of the market, but I'm bullish on software, right? When Stan Druckenmiller is talking about being right, bullish on software, listen. right, we're, 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 we're in the late, we're, we're in kind of the higher end of the multiple range. So multiples, historically, the median for... Growth multiples has been about seven or eight times revenue. Today, closer to 13 or 14. Slack, uh, Zoom, trading over 30 times forward revenues. Yeah. So we Business need software is like the hottest thing right now. Software is the new internet. Um, but I think there's a lot of justification for it. The fact of the matter is we're going through a once-in-a-generation replatforming of all of enterprise software. This is a trillion-dollar annual spend category that's being totally replatformed the first time since I've been investing 
And this is not a one-year phenomenon, a two-year phenomenon. I mean, you've been covering this for a long time. We've been talking about Salesforce, which has transformed this city for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get your head around the fact that we're still just getting started. For United Airlines, they're just starting their move to the cloud. For Expedia, they're just starting their move to the cloud. The cloud adoption that has occurred to date has been mostly companies starting up, Uber, Airbnb, Pinterest, that never had an on-prem software stack. Instead, they started in the cloud. Well, now we have the Fortune 1000, Global 1000, moving in an aggressive way to the cloud. That will be a trend that will affect our investing for years. Okay, you just mentioned Uber, um, gonna go public soon. You're an investor. When did you get involved with Uber? Um, we didn't get involved in Uber until Dara Kasher Shahi came on board as CEO. Okay, so late. Um, so, so later in, in, in kind of their investment, investment life, but we've invested, co-invest in the last three rounds of Uber. Um, this is a massive global opportunity, and Uber is the global leader. I think what a lot of people underappreciate in the United States, Lyft and, and, and Uber are pretty close competitors in many markets like San Francisco um, around ride sharing. But Uber is a massive global business. It is larger than every other ride-sharing company in the world, including China, put together, right? And so when you think about the scale advantages that accrue to the winner, 70-30 um, markets, 80-20 markets around the world, mm -hmm. we think that they have the best opportunity to not only own those markets, but to really drive the profits that we expect out of a market leader. You'll buy in the IPO? We will. And, and you'll, stick, you'll plan on sticking around for a while in, in that name? We will. We, we love the management team. Listen. We knew when we invested this was no get-rich-quick scheme, right? If you're underwriting into the IPO and you want to flip it, we saw what happened in Lyft. People who bought in the IPO, the stock is down 30% mm -hmm. um, uh, off of the, off the IPO pricing and even more off of the intraday high, okay? I don't think, that's not what we do as investors. We're underwriting to the next three to five years, and over that period of time, we expect that Uber's gonna to get to their target profitability they talked about in the S1, which is 40% contribution margins, 20, 25% EBITDA margins. We already see that in some of their mature markets. Um, That's the biggest question, obviously, that people have. It's like, well, they're, they're not profitable. Right. We don't know if they're, or when they're gonna be profitable. It was the overhang on Lyft, and, and they're asking the same questions about Uber. And it's totally justified. Skepticism of these companies coming into the public markets where they have negative unit economics, where they're still unprofitable, you know, is something that investors should be asking. At the end of the day, these are venture-like bets in the public markets, right? They're going to be more volatile. But think about Amazon when they went public. Jeff Bezos would come on his earnings calls and say for years how they were going to be unprofitable, investing in those future opportunities. For those who chose to get on the ride and believed him, they were rewarded with amazing returns. However, skeptics ruled the day for many, many years, and I think with Uber. You know, Dara has said he expects and wants to be the Amazon of transportation marketplaces. I think they have the opportunity to do that, but it's not going to be aligned straight up into the right.